two big things that are very different than Obamacare. One is states should be able to solve state problems. The federal government should not step in, as the president has, take away the right of states. We solved our problem on a bipartisan basis. We also had the business community, the health care community come together with but great Governor, support. It continues to have great support. You and say you solved we have the our, problem. We have our citizens insured, and it's exactly within the budget range that was put in place. Okay, so, you know, it's doing what it's supposed you know to me. do. Somehow this question keeps coming up. I don't think it's going away. Go <laughs> figure it soon. out. Kevin Madden, Republican strategist. So we're going to move right from health care. <laughs> uh, uh, we won't, we're not going to blindside you to anything admit related, although you, you, know, you know that, that subject area pretty well. Let's talk SCOTUS. Let's talk Supreme Court. Sure. Republicans, uh, battle lines are drawn around these things, and you know, there's lots of noise that gets made immediately uh, around this. If, if, how do you advise Republicans on this? How do you, how do you handle this? Should, should they be sort of rattling the sabers right now and making sure that the base is taken care of? Or there might be this well, situation where it, we don't have a big you know, it's a good question, but it's very hard to know right now because we don't know who the nominee is. Um, so, you know, I mean, depending on who it is, whether it's Merrick Garland or Elena Kagan, things can be very different. Or if Diane Wood, it's a very different thing. I mean, right. but I think fundamentally what happens with uh, Supreme Court nominations is that both parties see it as a, a as, as a entree to appeal to their base. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is always the, the political instinct up on Capitol Hill. I think that um, Republicans, again, will uh, seize an opportunity to, again, argue uh, from a judicial philosophy the different political contrasts that are apparent amongst a political electorate right now. So I think that's what Republicans would do, which is, okay, well, if, if take, for example, the Sotomayor case where we talked about the New Haven firemen. That was a perfect example, a perfect vehicle to describe the different worldviews that Republicans have from Democrats and how we see our judicial philosophies play out in every single day, everyday life. So if we have a case like that and we have a nominee that can, can, can start to, you know, show those contrasts to the American people in a very hyper-political year, I expect it to happen. I think the biggest peril right now, though, for Democrats is that with all the oxygen being taken up on a Supreme Court nomination, that every day that a, another second ticks off the clock where they can't pivot the jobs in the economy yeah. becomes a big problem for them. So I think they need to kind of keep this as a much cooler temperature throughout all the way through July or when we finally get a vote. Um, uh, for, an, for a nominee, uh, and, on a nominee. And I think there are lots of people in the White House who agree with that assessment, right. that they're looking so, for so, a slightly so cooler temperature. So all that advice that you make me give them, they're finally taking <laughs> <laughs> They're probably taking it. But you were talking about this hyper-politicized uh, environment yeah, that we're in right, right now. So you talked about the New Heavy case, and Sotomayor, though, was happening not in an election year. Right. Does the fact that this is the midterm election year and that we're a few months out even increase the desire among partisans up on the Hill to, to do that. I mean, the base thing is in every Supreme Court yeah. nomination. Does the midterm election year even absolutely, heighten that? Absolutely. And I think, you know, it'd be like us walking into a dog pound wondering if dogs are going to bark. You know, <laughs> it's like, that is what they do, especially when they're caged up. Um, it's a political year and politicians are going to play politics. They're all going to see this as an opportunity. Um, whether or not it's even the, some of the, the key senators that are leading the debate up on Capitol Hill, the infrastructures of both parties are going to, uh, from the bottom so up, Try and, not yeah, try, and, try and uh, gin a fight up. Uh, I want to ask you about the, the nuclear summit that's wrapping up today. The president, the president has made almost a week out of this. Because I know so much about nuclear. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> well, so, well, you know, you do yeah. know politics. The president I, I is focused on this. Of it all, when, right. when the White House does something for almost an entire week, it's mm -hmm. got some politics in mind. How does this mm -hmm. break down? I mean, it, this hasn't been your typical, you know, president says this and he gets blasted away from the right. There's been some critics. Right. But I, I think largely, I mean, he's trying to elevate a debate here. Right. I, think it, I think he elevates a debate, um, but he also feeds into a certain level of accomplishment. We're seeing little morsels of, of accomplishment here, whether it's China, whether it's Canada, um, coming out with some announcements. And what that does is it, it con continues to feed a narrative which has been very sorely lacking for the last year. But with the advent of healthcare, which I think, of course, is a, a mistake and it's going to end up hurting Not them. a good narrative. But, but they finally got an accomplishment together. Uh, and I think when the, the, when the president is now um, on, on basically the, the main actor in a national stage and is starting to bring together some sort of accomplishment level of accomplishment, it, it, can't but, it can't but help his political prospects. Very quickly, final 30 seconds. The Republicans gathered in New Orleans this week, this past weekend for the Southern Republican Leadership Conference. Your guy, Mitt Romney, won the straw poll by a single vote. But uh, last week you were here talking about Michael Steele, and I just want to say, did he clear the decks this weekend? Did he, did he successfully use that occasion to move on? The simple fact that we didn't talk about him until the end of this show <laughs> is a leading indicator that, <laughs> leading what, did I, what was the word, I, the, the phrase I used? Quiet efficiency. Yeah. Go back to quiet efficiency, put your head under uh, the hood of the car, fix it, 
and move on. We have the quiet. Well, you heard it here first, a leading indicator. We'll see if we can, we can set the trends here on Top Line. Kevin Madden, yeah. Republican strategist. Great we appreciate you, guys, as always. Appreciate Thank you being very with much. us. That does it for this edition of Top Line. Be sure to click us on again tomorrow. Twitter.com slash the note. Keep the conversation going. I, 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 the one thing I want to hand to Ron Paul is that we don't have to care about straw polls anymore. <laughs> yeah.